Hi everybody, Mark here at Rapid Response, and today I have uh, Tristan with IDEX Fire Safety with us, which is Hale. Okay, Hi. and we have the uh, Hale pump module here behind us, and this is the SAM pump module that a lot of you have seen on social media, and we're going to talk about this today, and I got the, the best guy for this, right? You're giving me a little bit too much credit, maybe? Okay. I mean, I'm... Yeah. You, know, you know a little bit. Okay, you <laughs> oh, know a little bit. A right? little. You know a little bit. So let's start off with this, Tristan. Tell, what is SAM? What is SAM about? So Sam is a scene apparatus manager, okay? This was the brainchild of a 20-year veteran of the Pattonville, Missouri Fire Department, which runs mutually with St. Louis, who consequently has the very first one. Uh, he got tired of being on this side of the truck when the fire is on that side of the truck. He really lost sight of his guys and what was going on on the safety ground, right? And like five minutes into the fire is chaotic, right? You're pulling this lever, you're doing that, you're making this connection, you have this guy coming up, where's this pike pull, where's that tool, where can I get this? And you're tethered to this thing all while trying to do that. This system really simplifies that whole process by a couple swipes and it really takes the stress off of you because it's managing itself and protecting the system while protecting the guys that are inside. Okay, so so a lot of a lot of feedback that we're going to get from this, and, and and I'm sure you have, and I'm I'm sure we will too. Is is it's electronic? We don't want electronics, you know. Electronics fail, but really in this, and even other fire apparatus today, we still have electronics. There's still things that can fail. A lot of it comes down to who you're buying from, the, the reputation of the company, okay, whether it being hail or vention apparatus or rapid response, you know, um, I say to everybody, you know, our, our return rate last year on electronics was less than 1%. That's out of 400, 500 vehicles. That's less than four vehicles. That's a, right. that's a pretty strong rate. Sure because is. Of how it was, because of how it was built, right? So what is different about the electronics in this with my ball with my valving because it's all electronic valving versus the electronic valving that you may see in in uh other applications still in today's industry honestly absolutely nothing this is the same valving the same harnessing of course upgraded valving upgraded harnessing with the system um, this whole system connects to your JL 1939 and for if you don't know, JL 1939 is what runs your engine and your transmission. So if you have an electronics problem, and this is on every piece of apparatus today, I guarantee most of the people watching have pieces of apparatus in their, in their bays right now that have that whole system, right? And if there happens to be a problem with that electronics, which we're already using, that truck is bigger problems than just the pump, right? And we have, we have some backups in play for that. Um, so if you would lose your electronics, your JL 1939, you get on scene and the truck just dies, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you have battery power to this, you can manually still open and close these valves. So as long as there's juice to this thing, you can open and close those valves. Okay, so truck fails, I can still operate this. Now I'm gonna play devil's advocate here and say, what happens if my electric valve goes bad, right? Because if I'm in an application, I have a guy that has, I, I want to push pull valve. If I pull the lever, that means the valve works. Eh, not necessarily, right? How many times have we seen push pulls come disconnected? Or how many times have we seen the ball valve break off or come loose actually in the valve mechanism itself? Like that happens in the industry. We've yes. seen it. Yes. Honestly, it happened to me once on a fire, <laughs> you know? So it has happened. So not saying it doesn't happen on push pull is a myth because it happens. But you just want to step above and beyond on the valving on this, and, and how did you do that to prevent, to, to have that fail safe going into this type of system? Right, so I mean, one thing you got to keep in mind with this system is it was invented by firemen, right? Firemen are really, really good at what ifing the crap out of everything. So not knocking the engineer, but this wasn't engineered behind the guy that puts the oil filters on cars that we can't ever get to because they're upside down, inside so, out. So right? sort of, kind of, okay. so um, okay. he's a fireman, but he also has an engineering degree. Okay. So the guy got bit by the fire bug when he was in college in his engineering degree, he joined the local FD. Okay. So we kind of got the best of both worlds happening here, right? Yeah, I gotcha. So yep. going back to your question with the valving, uh, it might be hard to see and we, you know, once we come out to show you this thing, so on that valve there, you can see there's a pin that comes out. So on our new valving, 
every valve has a pin on both sides of the, the valve controller. You can also get a hand wheel that you can color code, right? So color code it to the color code of your lines or whatever. And in the event that you lose all of your power, your battery, you can still manually open and close that. However, same principle goes if you walk up to your pump panel now, your cotter pin falls out and the T-handle is in your hand because it's no longer connected to the valve. What do you do, right? Yeah, right. You go to a different, you go to a different um, valve, right. right? Same concept here. One valve causing a problem does not kill this whole system. Everything is going to work intermittently. So nothing, not one, one problem is going to cause a problem for the whole thing. Okay. And that, 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 I think that's probably the biggest fail safe that you see is, is I can manually go in and turn that valve or on other electronic valves, I can't even do that. Correct. Like I'm, I, if that valve doesn't open or doesn't close, on other systems, I'm dead in the water. Basically. Well, so Akron valves have always had that pin off of one side. Yep. We have updated the valve to come off the two with a new controller on top. Oh, well, you can always see it. However, right. the biggest difference is this on a traditional panel has a bunch of T-handles and doesn't open. Think about this. This is a 26 inch panel, right? Yep. On a fire apparatus, this becomes a humongous door you get an OEM to orient those valves to the outside of this panel, and there is your automatic fail safe. You can just reach in and make it happen. Yeah. And, 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 yep. and move forward. So you mentioned one thing at the very beginning here, and that was how we can operate this truck. We're always on the wrong side, okay? I pulled up the dozens of fires, hundreds, whatever you want to call it, right? And I'm always on the wrong side of the truck. And I know I am personally, along with the many other firefighters, you like to see what's going on. We're visual people, right? That's why we're in this industry. Like that's that's what we do. Right. We like to see what's going on. And we're never on the right side. You know <laughs> what I mean? For some reason the commanding guy never gets us in the right side. We're always the the, the, the house fire is over there, you Bad. know? Yes. Um yes. so this allow this we have what we have two panels on, on on either side of this that we can control. Correct. So there's a screen here. This is your mainframe, right? So this gives you your governor and a little bit more control. On the other side, we have the screen, but you can literally pump this from both sides. There's also an option that we didn't include on this one, but there's also a tablet that you can literally run up to four or 500 feet away from this truck and pump this truck. So yeah. if you have a short manpower day and you need one guy's going in to knock the fire, the pump operator can flake the hose and literally stand next to the guy on the front door and charge the line. Yeah, we're not, I think, I think there's some, some misconceptions where people are like, I'm never going to let my truck sit there and, and, and have the guys go inside. That's not necessarily what this is. This is made for to allow this operator in low main power situations to be able to do other stuff in the area. That they're of, doing already. That they're doing that already. That they're already doing right, already. That they're already doing. This just know? takes that stress level away, right? Yeah. And it's protecting it. So we won't let you cavitate. We'll never shut down a line. If you if you lose your water source, we automatically drop the tank and give you the tank water. All why all while giving you an audible uh, a voice that says, "Hey, you caution! You've lost your intake pressure. You've lost your tank water. You're down to a quarter tank, or your tank's out of water." So there's a verbal. If you're not near the truck, you're going to hear the truck telling you what's happening. So, so, so people maybe giving some kickback or making fun of Fireman Sam that's in the, inside there on a loudspeaker. And in reality, it's the truck's already doing what any other truck would do before. The only thing that we're doing now is, is we're, we're giving the audible communication that if I am out there uh, uh, moving a line, moving a hose line, you know, to get it around something and something does happen back here, I have an audible versus just a visual that I have to now look at. You know, now I hear it now. I'm like, oh, wait a second. I got a guy inside. I got something going on with this truck. It told me my tank water is low or it told me that there's a problem with the suction. Yep. I can now run back to this thing and take care of it. It's not made to push a button and just completely let it go for the rest of the fire scene. That's not what it's made for. It's made to make you a better pump operator, ultimately, what this Correct. is made for. Correct. Know? I mean, so. you can do presets. Each individual 
preset can be preset, so you dial your line in and then it's right every time. We still need to know hydraulics, right? If yeah. you add a, a section of hose, you need to know to add that section of hose. Yeah. If you go up a floor, you need to add pressure down a floor. If you take a tip off, whatever. We're not trying to get rid of pump operators, we're trying to make them more efficient and because, take some human error away. Because of manpower. Correct. This is man power saving and in re and, and, and really saving more in the in saving manpower saving manpower we don't have people to work we don't have people to volunteer anymore in these fields and this is this is helping that so we're going to go over some pump actual operation here um with tristan and go from there okay now we're going to do we're going to do some actual pump operation just to show the viewers um this ain't a training video that's not what this is for this is to get viewers like you that we might be building your truck for you to understand um, a little bit of, of how this works on the back side. So uh, question, if I got gloves on, what happens? Yeah, so this works with a gloved hand just as well as a ungloved hand. So it's not your cell phone where you need that specialty glove or touch pad or whatever. Okay. This is pressure sensor. So what you want to do is take the most surface area of your finger, get it on there and it'll, okay. it'll run. What happens if I smash the screen? And then you go to the other side, there you right? Go. Like that. And, so, and, then we, and then we overnight or we we correct. We we we, we, we cross ship a screen or something. Correct. To get we you going to we get keep them in stock. It's literally a couple screws. We give you the synchroniz synchronization code. You hit the synchronization, and it programs yeah, the from the other. Yeah, wrong. Like we've bounced nozzles and couplings off of this thing already. Yeah. yeah. You know, and haven't had problems. They're so. they're military grade. Yeah. Um. So. But like anything. We're firefighters and we can still break it. Yeah, we like to use the term fireman proof, which I'm pretty certain is a made up thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, let's let's do a little bit of uh, pump. I guess we can use, I don't know what you want to use for a discharge or anything. Yeah, we'll just matter. use, we'll just dump some water out of the master stream. Okay, let's uh, point that thing the other way. Can we do that maybe? Yeah, yeah your thing's, that you want to do that and I'll get it in gear a while? Yeah, do, do you want me to talk through putting it in yeah, gear? Yeah, go ahead and talk through putting it in gear. I'm going to point this away so we don't get a shower, so, you know. So, one thing that is a little different but kind of the same right so when you put your traditional truck in gear just like you always do pump tank to pump you pull cut out pull your tank to pump and you recirculate right when you put ours in gear tank to pumps already dropped and we're now monitoring some temperature down in the pump and we'll circulate as needed so i'll put this thing in gear and we'll walk through presets intakes and go from there Okay, we're gonna put pump in gear, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Just like your normal pump operations. Pump in gear. T talk pump us. engaged. Sam ready. Put it down into drive. Yep. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, Raise one, your foot and we're One in. thing, if you notice, um, if you notice, Vengeant, what we did a little different there. I we did. Have, yeah. We have all our marker lights go on blue in our truck for when our pump goes in gear. So not only is this thing talking to you, the engine apparatus took us a step higher um, with the wheel and core system and we actually turn all our marker lights to blue in this truck when, when the pump goes in gear. So you have another visualization on the fire field that the pump is in gear working on this truck. So Absolutely a yeah. detailed touch, right? Yeah. All right, so you saw that our screen has changed now. So we were in our manual mode prior. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna see your intakes, and then on the right-hand side will be your discharges. The four favorites, so your most utilized pre-connects will be at the bottom, we call them quick sets. We can run up to 12 discharges total with this thing, and you can get into them at any time. So we're gonna run the deck gun. So our deck gun is the blue one here. We'll just grab what we do. Our tank's already down, so our tank the pump's open. Grab our line, pull it up here to push the pump, let it go. Who's charging? And off we go, we have water. Okay. So to shut it down, you grab it, drag the line across, and down it goes. So this is where we would normally establish a water supply, and we have MIVs to master intake valves on this thing. 
So you would make your connection, drag it over. I'm not going to because we don't have it. Well, I can. So what I can do is I can let it go and you're going to see that it says venting. So what that means is we're automatically venting the water from the hydrant and our valve is going to open once it sees water. The significance to that with this is if you have a low manpower day, your pump operator can make the hook here, swipe that over, so it's going to tell us, it always is telling us what's, how, what's going on, okay? So we're going to clear that so I can finish telling you. So you swipe that over, make your connection here, pump operator runs, hits the hydrant. By the time he fires it up, we see water, we'll establish the water supply. So in that first five minutes, you can dump your tank and your pump operator can dump the tank, get water going, make the hydrant and get water supply established as well. So we don't have that. So just to get out of that, we just drop the tank back down. I'm, I'm noticing when you're operating this, your screen controls, you have, you have nice spacing between stuff. So if you have big gloves on, it's cold outside, it's right. snow and whatever else not. This stuff is pretty easy to manage and, and really it's not over complicated for electronics because in today's world, like you know, cell phones, everything else, we, we over complicate some easy processes. And what I'm seeing is, is is this is this is easy. Like the train somebody on this is talking. It's really it's really kind of the idea. I mean we have we have some of the old school guys that are a little intimidated by this and 10, 15 minutes, we have them running with this. It's it's yeah. really not as complicated as they think. Yeah, this is this is a huge game changer for the industry. Uh, not not just on, a, on an apparatus level of building trucks like we do, but just for the industry in its own. Where we just don't we go again. We go back to manpower. It's not replacing a guy. Right. It is helping a guy. Is is better way to say it. You know. Correct. Um, a lot of people are thinking that this is a replacement for a human being. That's not necessarily. It's letting that human being do what he did before, but just now be more safely at doing it because we have more visuals, more audio, and easier ways to, to engage. Absolutely. Order. Yeah. You know? so, yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, so the fire service um, hates two things, right? The way things are and change. We are absolutely asking them to see a big change, and this is a big change, right? So it scares us. The unfortunate thing is, is we're not maybe getting some of the mechanical skills that we used to. We're having trouble at volunteer fire departments getting some of these young kids to get interested into the fire service. This is something that they're familiar with. This is something that doesn't doesn't intimidate them, right? I mean, you see every day, <laughs> let's talk about uh, thermal cameras, right? So the fire company, doesn't like progression, but they have progressed. 10 years ago, we talk about thermal cameras, right? And how nobody wanted them because you would lose the art of being able to get out if it breaks. Again, what if it breaks? Today, everybody has them on their SCBA. Everybody has one in their fire apparatus. Everybody is using them, yeah. right? So the, the truth of the matter is the fire service is progressing. We are literally just making things harder by not progressing faster as we should be because of tradition. Yeah, right. We're held back by we're our- We're afraid of it. We're held back by our ways, you know? And, Correct. And that's one slogan that we have with Benjamin Apparatus is, is join the change. You'll hear us say that on many of our videos, many of our things, join the change. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is where it's at. This is what's happening. This is, this is uh, technology that honestly probably should have been brought to us 10 years ago, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but it's developed. And we stress that again from a firefighter. This isn't just a bunch of people behind a countertop, you know, that 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 right. behind a computer that 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 made this. You know, it's it's made by firefighters. There's redundancies in it, more than a lot of your simple other electronic valve systems. You know, really. So yep. um, we're happy to build the first F550 Sam's pump on a lifted chassis like this. We're, we're excited to do that. That's that's pretty wild that, yes, that we can make a truck look like this and operate like this very well. Um, Benjamin Apparatus is a, is a vast growing uh, company. Rapid Response is our parent company. It's been in the emergency services uh, upfitter field for a long time. We built thousands of emergency vehicles. That's not an understatement by any means. Um, but the apparatus side of it is, is, is um, we're very innovative, um, we're very customized, and um, 
if, if somebody else can do it, we can definitely do it. And if somebody else can't do it, we probably can do it. You know, so that's, that's, that's what we are. Yeah. Everything is customized on our body. We encourage you to check out VengeAnapparatus.com. We're proud for the partnership with, with IDEX um, Fire and Safety, not just in Hale, you know, but in the other divisions as well, you know. Correct. Um, and uh, they're, they're a great company overall to work with. If you'd like to learn more about the Sam's Pump or would like to uh, a demo on it, you might even have Tristan himself here come out, depending where you're at in your area, uh, especially right here in, in the Pennsylvania area. It'll, it'll definitely, yeah, absolutely. Def definitely be Tristan. Absolutely. You know, we'd, we'd be more than happy to come out. Um, we have a great dealer network set up for Vengeance Apparatus. Um, for those areas that don't have a dealer network, we would handle that as an in-house account for the time being. But our dealerships are vastly growing because we're doing stuff like this. You know, we're staying ahead of this. And, and, and uh, uh, in the same aspect, though, we're building just standard pumps from you, too, though, right now. Like, um, yes. We do yeah, offer, the... don't, don't, don't think that we have to sell you a Sam's pump um, <laughs> if, if budget concerns or we got to get you in this special price point. You know, there's a little bit of cost that comes with this. It's the nature of the beast. It's how it is. Um, it's like if you want an XLP truck versus an XL truck, there's a cost that comes with that. The same with, um, think of this as the lariat of the Super Duty. Um, versus the XLP of I your, like it. Uh, I like it. Your, uh, versus your, your, your normal pump. So, yeah. uh, thanks viewers for watching us today. Uh, reach us out at any time. We'd be more than happy to answer questions for you. We hope this answered a lot of questions of how the SAMS pump operates. I think it'll make the, the fire guys, the people sitting behind their computers right now watching YouTube. Um, <laughs> Uh, have a better understanding of, of what this pump module sure. actually is. Sure, so. and we, we also have some more available information at samflows.com. So we have a whole cache of videos on there as well if you have questions. And again, feel, please feel free to call Mark and the team here at Vengeant, um, and we will absolutely get your questions answered. Great, thanks Tristan. Thank you yeah. all.